this brief movement of activism in the 80s was probably a precursor of the Diggers Forum. It definitely was, really, although the Diggers Forum, when it started, was not was independent of the IFA. Um, it was its own group of activists who gradually decided that, that, that joining the IFA and starting a special interest group was a better way of securing its future, which is something we never managed to do with ACT. Archaeologists communicate, transform. And when uh, the Diggers Forum started, uh, there was a brief flurry of, of um, communication about ACT in its initial newsletters. People asking what it was and what it done. Um, and it's difficult to remember now. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, worth, it's worth pondering because archaeologists communicate, transform, act, um, was anti-establishment. We did see an archaeological establishment. You're right, Kate, in some ways there's no such thing. But what we saw when English heritage was formed and when uh, the IFA was formed was the same people doing the same things for their own reasons. And underneath that was a whole, uh, a whole society of diggers who, for whom nothing much was getting better. Um, apart from, in some instances, the archaeology. <laughs> um, and certainly this, this was what gave rise to that. 1985, a uh, young archaeologist conference in um, February at the University of Southampton. Keynote address from the new chair of English Heritage, Lord Montague of Ewley. Obviously not an establishment figure in any sense whatsoever. Um, and uh, at the same time, English Heritage, with its newfound funding, was paying for a research excavation at Maiden Castle not something any of us had previously identified as a rescue situation. Uh, and there was a lot of bad feeling about this. There was a, a groundswell of, of opinion saying, if you're going to spend money on archaeology in this country in the middle of the 1980s, you shouldn't be doing it at Maiden Castle. You should be doing it somewhere that actually needed some archaeology doing to it. Uh, it was dressed up as, as a as a sort of revisiting of Mortimer Wheeler's excavations, uh, and, and it, was a, it was a big showpiece excavation for English Heritage, the newly formed Heritage, National Heritage Organisation. Uh, these are some notes I made during uh, Lord Montague's address. Um, you can't read it. I can't read it. Um, but it <laughs> says there, I can't help feeling that we are, did I translate it for you? Yeah. I can't help feeling we're being blackmailed. <laughs> um, we've already heard about MSC schemes reducing unemployment figures. Um, if the MSC funds 50% of our country's work in the country, etc., etc., I was getting very cross. I remember sitting on the uh, railway station in Southampton after the conference finished, fairly hungover, obviously with Hal Dalwood, uh, the late, great Hal Dalwood. And we were discussing the ramifications of everything that had happened at the Young Archaeologist Conference. And we said, let's form our own pressure group. Let's, uh, let's try and change things. Let's, um, let's do something. At the time in Southampton, I was working for Southampton Archaeology, um, the city council unit. Uh, we like to call ourselves the People's Republic of Southampton or the Communist <laughs> Collective of Southampton because we felt we worked together in a very uh, egalitarian way. We had a we had a run in with the council over our pay and conditions, um, and what we saw was discrepancies between what different people were being paid for effectively the same job, uh, and uh, we were motivated. And there were a lot of us because we had a couple of big excavations going on. We had about 80 people working there at the time. So we formed Archaeologists Communication, Communicate, Transform as a result of this. Uh, and we wrote to uh, the IFA uh, at the time saying this is 88th and 93rd Street, that was where 
we were based in Southampton, that was the City Council archaeology office, one of them. That's where I did all my pottery analysis. Um, and we said uh, we, we wanted to form a group uh, and ask people to come to Southampton on the 19th of October uh, to talk about issues, to share problems and to formulate something that had a national basis. And we signed it, Andy Armo, that became our, our um, rallying cry. <laughs> One thing we can say, although this ultimately was doomed to failure, as you'll find out, was that we had better jokes than the IFA have ever had. <laughs> and um, <coughs> this is my diary entry from the 19th of October 1985. I missed out a bit about how much we drank at lunchtime and in the evening. Um, over 100 people. We were astonished. We were amazed. Kevin gave one of the first talks, I believe. The first talk. Yeah, the first yeah. talk of the, of the morning about uh, New Zealand, London. DUA, I suppose it was in those days. Um, and we had, the day was organised in three parts. There were some short talks on contracts. Thank you, Kevin. Women in archaeology. Just think about how long it's taken for CEPA to form the Equality and Diversity Group. And we were talking about women in archaeology in 1985. Um, NSC funding, the role of the unions and the IFA. And we did see, I'm sorry, but we did see the IFA as being led by the establishment, even if it wasn't the establishment. Many of us were members of the IFA. We wanted to be in the IFA because we wanted to affect the way archaeology developed in the country. Uh, but we didn't see it doing exactly the things that we were hoping it would achieve. And that's part of the reason for the formula, formation of this group. Then we split into separate small discussion groups and talked about everything, shared our issues, decided what it is that we should do, and finished off with a general discussion. And then a massive party back at my house <laughs> which really annoyed the neighbours. Um, so by the end of October 1985, we were writing to people um, to ask them uh, to attend a meeting in London in January to tell people that we existed. If we'd been doing this today with emails and mobile phones, etc., we probably would have still been going. This was about as low res. <laughs> a group as you could possibly imagine. We just had a photocopier and a dot matrix printer and that was about it. But we, we, by the end of October we had these regional coordinators across the country. People from all those areas had come to our meeting and decided to go back and form their own groups and, um, and begin to try and put pressure on, on various uh, issues to affect the way that um, the archaeology was developing. The London meeting then made the following decisions, <coughs> and this was the beginning of the end, really. <laughs> uh, we, we, um, no, this was, yeah, uh, we got, this was the 19th of October meeting, sorry. Another meeting in London in January. Until, until then, Southampton would begin we continue to run the Act Affairs and produce the publicity. Uh, we continue our communication of the record of the day's proceedings and notice of the next meeting. Uh, and then we'd be at TAG in Glasgow uh, to reach a more northerly membership. Um, uh, and then we wanted the donation. We collected 85 quid on the first day and we needed just to have people send money in to keep paying for the postage, effectively. Um, and that's the letter that we sent out. Come to London and act for archaeologists. Not until we actually uh, started, we had somebody design a logo for us. And at that point, ACT, we realised what a powerful um, acronym that is. Because ACT itself lends itself to so many different um, meanings. So in London, we formulated a policy. Um, which was determined by the entire membership at national meetings. So nothing would change unless everybody got together to decide that. 
Uh, we'll make representations and act as a pressure group, uh, be an information centre for advice and information, and that was particularly important for women members. Um, conduct a questionnaire. That was a huge undertaking which never really worked out, as we'll see. Uh, and then we wanted to communicate. That was the point. We wanted, by through communication of what we saw as the diggers' lot or the basic archaeologists' lot at the bottom of the pile, communicate those feelings, those issues, uh, our perceptions to these other organisations to represent the views of the Act membership, to get something to change uh, for everybody's benefit across professional archaeology. So we had a policy approach on all of these issues. Um, MSC, unions, discrimination, we formed our own women's group, excavators, HBMC, developers uh, and public archaeology. Some of them we could do more easily than others. We, have to, we bit off a lot. We really did uh, have grand ambitions. We also, uh, our policy towards the IFA was to stand for the IFA Council. We nominated uh, half, five people to stand uh, for the IFA Council at the next AGM. Uh, some of those names are familiar to you. Peter Hinton. Do you want to talk to Pete about, um, about those days and see what he says? He put himself forward. None of us got elected. Um, one person who came in late, Val Turner, uh, stood as a sort of uh, on a semi act ticket. Um, <coughs> and did get elected to council, so we did have somebody on the council representing us. Um, but but uh, none of us actually succeeded, uh, which is good in a way. I'm quite glad I was never on the IFA council. Um, so these, this was our newsletter activity. You can see how the acronym really plays out. Um, the Steve Bell Penguins were quite uh, prominent in it. Um, we had, uh, I can't remember if I've shown you, if I've got other things, but anyway, that was our, uh, that was our um, article on uh, the IFA by old Cluffy. <laughs> uh, he was great. Um, so the Council of 18, and that's, that, is, that was how the IFA Council broke down in 1986. And we, didn't, and, and, uh, we did see that as being pretty establishment. Um, and we weren't very happy about that. And that was, I mean, we never, we never wanted to oppose anything. We wanted to join it and change it through communication and activity. It wasn't in opposition to the IFA or HBMC or anything. It was just wanting to represent the views from uh, further down the ladder. We had our membership leaflet, Act for Archaeologists. Uh, and then we went to the Young Archaeologist Conference in Lancaster in, uh, at the end of 1986 to talk to them about ACT and uh, what we were hoping to achieve. Um, that's, a trans that's my, my talk, um, which I completed that morning. <laughs> and. Uh, um, Actually, I, it was surprisingly coherent, considering. Um, but I did get heckled by three uh, English heritage inspectors who just laughed at everything I said, uh, which was not very, uh, not very clever. Um, yeah. So um, anyway, uh, we did think there was something wrong that needed mended, and I suppose being laughed at by English heritage inspectors proves the point, really. Um, the ACT questionnaire, it was very long, uh, we got hundreds of them photocopied, we sent them out, we got them back, uh, and then we just didn't have the resources to, to actually uh, collate the results. Um, and they just hung around in our warehouse in boxes, hundreds of boxes of A4, uh, waiting for somebody to do something with them, and we never got around to it, and that's a real shame, because it's the first of the sort of profiling the profession type exercises done from the bottom up. It would have been interesting to see what we could have done. 
Uh, now, one of the policies was that no, we have the Act Sec Secretariat. That's what we arrived at in London in '86, and that's what uh, Southampton became, the Act Secretariat. But you couldn't do it for more than a year. And at the end of a year, you had to hand it over to somebody else. So we avoided uh, any sort of um, any sort of uh, uh, possibility of, of bias or um, corruption. Uh, so we handed over to the West Yorkshire Archaeology Unit in Leeds in, uh, at the end of '86, and we never heard from them again. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of them lost their jobs quite soon afterwards. Uh, there was a big cull at West Yorkshire, and the whole thing fizzled out. Uh, somewhere there is still a building society account with about eight quid in it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I imagine that's just been written off now. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, the whole thing came to an end. Uh, but from this beginning, um, it's interesting to reflect on, uh, as I say, we had some really good jokes. Um, this was our poster, Midden Castle Torset. Uh, so the Maiden Castle uh, thing that kicked it all off was what we ran with for our, uh, for our publicity. Um, so, did we make a difference? Well, uh, I think well, we tried to continue engagement with the IFA. It was about uh, the establishment. We, as I say, we didn't see the IFA as an establishment, but the people who started it. I went to a meeting that formed a PIFA in 1979 uh, at the Museum of London. I don't know if you, anyone else there? Um, you say, you know, it's difficult because it was an invitation only meeting. I got in because uh, I pretended to be the protect projection of the system. And um, uh, I know another, I went down there with a bloke I was digging with in Northamptonshire at the time, uh, and we sat and listened to Professor Richard Atkinson, Philip Barker, Peter Adelman, uh, Barry Cunliffe. Uh, the same people talking about the establishment of the Institute of Field Archaeologists. And most of the meeting was about what do we mean by a field archaeologist and should we be including fine specialists and museum curators in that. Um, and at the end of the meeting, Bob Carr from Suffolk came up to us and said, uh, well, that was a load of rubbish, wasn't it? <laughs> what should we be doing instead? Uh, and so uh, from that, from there, from 1979, the IFA was was doomed, I'm afraid, to be labelled with that, with that establishment tag because of the people who were promoting it. And the, you know, looking back now, you think, well, who else was going to promote it? Who else was going to stand up and say, we need to do something about professional archaeology in this country? Good for them that they did. Bad for them in some ways in the way they did it. And the things that we tried to do with ACT, a women's group, to deal with trade unions, talk about the MSC was not what the IFA was doing at the time. They could have had a women's group starting up straight away, uh, but that wasn't the way they looked at it. Um, but I like to think that we, um, that what we did do was uh, we put pressure on the IFA to form regional groups because of our regional structure. The IFA followed that to some extent. At a similar time, when regional groups were established, I became the secretary of the Wessex group, um, there was a group in London, Wales and Scotland, which is still going, I think. Um, there was West Midlands group, there was the North York's group, or the New York group. Um, and uh, and they, they sort of attempted to democratise the IFA. As the Wessex group requested minutes from council meetings so that we could form our own agendas and talk to the IFA about things that they were talking about from our own regional perspective. Uh, and that's, that's, in some ways, that's, that's what ACT wanted to achieve, a degree of democratisation. We sort of failed because we, well, because it was so low res, because it was relying on, uh, on snail mail and photocopiers, uh, because we changed our secretariat probably every year, it was probably too ambitious. Um, but we attempted something. And I don't think that should be forgotten. I mean, this act was one of the reasons we held this mm. session, because the conversation Hannah and I were having uh, at the drinks reception last year was about 
you know, I was telling her about acting. She said, I've never heard of it. And I said, well, let's do a session and then we can tell more people about it. It may have been a complete waste of our time, but, uh, in, but oh, I don't think it was. I think we did. Uh, what we, we certainly shook things up. Uh, and it's a shame that um, it didn't keep going for a little bit longer. And as I say, the Diggers Forum now is its current manifestation. And it's a good thing that the Diggers Forum is a, an IFA special interest group because that's what ACT ultimately could have become. Thank you. Thank you.